my favorite experience is when the people who are cleaning the gallery stop and can't move. <laughs> But what I found with my work, and, and th this may be one of the only boasty things you'll hear me say in a long time, but this gives me great pleasure. When people stop in front of my work and they stay there for a long time, and they bring their friends over, and they take selfies, uh, and they read the label carefully, and they relate to the work. The people who just walk by and nod, you know, they look, but they don't see. Uh, and that, to me, is the other half of the equation. I, I make the work of art because I really want to make a beautiful work of art. And I also am very dedicated to making uh, archival work. I mean, I make paintings that will last 500 years. And I guess that's because of my early training. So I really care about the classical techniques and the layering of paint and the, the technical aspect of it, which is really complex and brainy and so much fun. It, it, everything else seems kind of boring by comparison to painting. And secretly, painters are snobs because they know this. They know you have to have, and you know, <laughs> you have to have all those skills at your fingertips. And, and when you're doing it, you have to be totally on. And, and you have to be on for the entire time that you're actually making it. There can be no lapse of concentration or channeling or whatever it is you're doing. So that's become my life, you know. if I would use the word serendipity. It, it's happened from time to time, but most often I feel like I just have to let loose and not try to control things and go with whatever is the universal energy and it will guide me. And at times it's been so powerful that there was no choice. Uh, for instance, a large project I did called the Shekhinah Scrolls, which is based on the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Kabbalah and involves the Hebrew alphabet, which is a vast guide to the future. And it's based on the past. It's 80 feet long. It took two years to make. Uh, it was all made by women, the Shekhinah, the feminine aspect of God. Uh, women just appeared when they were needed, whether they were scribes or they were assistants. Uh, that, to me, was something I still cannot explain. It made me make it. It knew what it wanted to be, and it made me make it. Uh, generally, I feel like I'm guiding my work up to a certain degree. And then you have to let go and say, be what you want to be. You know, let, let it, the creative process guide you rather than you try to guide it. So it, I couldn't call it serendipity, but I would call it maybe sort of that kind of Deepak Chopra uh, plug into the energy of the universe kind of thing. I, I hope that doesn't sound cheesy, but it actually is there. You, you just have to be conscious of it and channel into it and it goes like ball bearings. <laughs> The Deep Sea Project, which we did last year for Art Miami, uh, which is about the sea. You know, the sea as being the source of life, three quarters of the planet. Uh, marine conservation, rising sea levels in Miami, which Ray and I were on the same panel discussing at the Paris Art Museum recently. Uh, that was very challenging because up until a month before the project, I was, excuse my French, getting dicked around by the major sponsor who was supposed to supply shipping containers. Couldn't get that nailed down. <coughs> and at the last minute, Avra Jane stepped forward and she says, I have shipping containers, use my containers. So I had to pull together a project with no budget when we outset. And I went to my board of the My Art Foundation. I said, guys, if you ever wanted to cough up, this is the moment, and they all did. And they supported me, and members of my board worked very hard, including the vice president of my board, Sonia, who went out and was painting these containers physically in a dead heat in a build-out yard on 79th Street. Anyway, we pulled that together just barely in time to put it on the trucks and cart it down to Art Miami. And it was tremendously received, tremendously received, and very timely to such a degree that uh, I was overwhelmed. I mean, when Artnet reviewed the whole week, we were the lead item that they mentioned out of everything, Art Basel, Art Miami, 
all of the projects that took place in Miami. So that, that, was, that was very challenging. And then previously in 2003 and 2004, I did large-scale exhibitions for the city of Miami called Omni Art 1, 2, and 3, which we did in the Omni area. I've done some project in there for the city, repainting the 12 square blocks of the Omni area. It was derelict warehouses. The Performing Arts Center was almost finished, and there were bums in the streets. So we did that to upgrade the neighborhood, result of which the city came back to me and said, do something for the city of Miami that highlights Miami artists, uh, because Art Basel comes here, and they don't even know who we are. We're a party venue. So it was to bring the focus onto Miami. So we did that a couple of years in a row. In the second year, they cut our funding, and the money went somewhere to some politicians. So you know, yada yada yada. <laughs> so after a few years, it died. But while it lived, it's kind of you know made a very strong impact, and that was also very challenging because there were short deadlines. There were many many people involved, many artists involved, but it was very satisfying.